Hi, I'm James Bobbitt, a lawyer with Brooks Pierce in North Carolina. In today's COVID-19 connection video, I'm going to discuss North Carolina Executive Order Number 134, which permits employers to provide financial assistance or COVID-19 support payments to employees temporarily furloughed due to the coronavirus. Before we get started, I want to remind you that the content of this video is for educational purposes only. Viewing the video does not create an attorney-client relationship between you and Brooks Pierce. This video should not be considered legal advice or used as a substitute for consulting an attorney for legal advice regarding your individual situation. On April 20th, 2020, North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper issued Executive Order No. 134, permitting employers to provide COVID-19 support payments to employees who have been temporarily furloughed for reasons related to COVID-19 without affecting their unemployment insurance benefits. Under normal circumstances, such financial assistance would reduce, delay, or wholly preclude employees' unemploy unemployment benefits. However, recognizing the unique and unprecedented circumstances presented by the COVID-19 pandemic, Executive Order Number 134 provides an exception. Employers that are fortunate enough to have the financial ability to provide financial assistance must follow certain steps. First, employers must submit an employer-filed unemployment insurance claim, known as an attached claim, for each employee who may receive COVID-19 support payments. Employers can find instructions for filing attached claims on the website for the North Carolina Division of Employment Security, DES, the governmental agency responsible for administering unemployment benefits in North Carolina. Second, employers must submit a written plan for providing COVID-19 support payments to DES. This plan requires employers to certify that payments are not wages for work performed while employees are furloughed. Instead, employers must acknowledge four things. One, that the payments are made voluntarily in response to furloughing the employee. Two, the payments are for services rendered by the employee in the past. Three, the employee or the employee's estate is not obligated to repay the payment under any circumstance. And four, the payment does not obligate the employee to perform or not perform any act in connection with the individual's status as an employee. While employers may submit or must submit written plans to DES, approval of these plans by DES is not required. I also want to point out that submission of plans to DES should not be considered promises by employers to provide COVID-19 support payments to employees. And employers have discretion to stop providing payments before the end of the scheduled plan that they provide to DES. Additionally, Acceptance of COVID-19 support payments by employees are not promises that employees will return to work once the employer has work for them to perform. Employees retain the option to accept other employment should it become available. We hope today's video is helpful to you. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out to me at jbobbitt, B-O-B-B-I-T-T, at brookspierce.com. You can also visit Brooks Pierce COVID-19 response page at brookspierce.com slash COVID-19. Thank you.